So go ahead and state your full name for the camera. Uh, Dr. Thomas Stanley Fortson. You know, if I had one <clears throat> message or one character quality uh, that I believe uh, we need to communicate to young people is this whole idea of determination. Uh, because we learn a lot through failure. As I look back on my own personal life, and again, like I said before, we we're all on a journey. And we have a story to tell. So as I tell my story, uh, what has led me to be what I would call relatively successful? And I think it has been a determination. Uh, I've learned a lot through failure, trying something and not giving up, knowing that I can do it. And I think the key is knowing that you can do it and you need encouragement. That comes from friends, it comes from family, and it comes from uh, a community that uh, you can do it. I had a, uh, in high school, uh, I think God gave me uh, uh, the, the idea to work hard and to be scholastic, to get good grades, uh, but always felt insecure. I think, you know, you talk to, as I talk to you now, sometimes it's uneasy to talk out of failure. But as I look back in my life, I could have been a failure uh, if I didn't have people around me who encouraged me and uh, just a spirit of determination. For an example, I, I was, uh, like I said before, I was kind of insecure in um, uh, when we went to school, especially after uh, fifth grade. That's the first time we ever, uh, we integrated and we went to um, school with uh, white boys and girls. And I'll never forget that experience because obviously I, blew up in a, I grew up in a black community and um, went to an all black elementary school but we didn't integrate until uh, we went to junior high school. And I remember just how insecure I was because of what you hear, what you see. I grew up in a community where uh, there was this playground that was surrounded by trees and there was a, um, uh, a swimming pool. We always heard the kids playing and, and uh, swimming and making a lot of noise, but we couldn't go. Now this is back in the early, uh, late 50s, early 60s. And so when we first integrated, I was very uh, uh, insecure whether or not I could compete in the classroom. Now people come to class or they get into things and we have feelings of insecurity for whatever reason. Mine happened to be one of race. As a young black uh, African American, could I compete uh, against these white kids? And where did I get that from? I got it from the fact that they had a swimming pool over there and we heard them playing and we couldn't get in. So I kind of grew up this, uh, this inferiority complex. But it wasn't until I got into the classroom and I said, hey, you know what, it, it may not be as difficult um, as uh, I thought it would be, but I was sort of steered away from the, um, uh, the classes where, quote, it seemed like all the the white kids went to all the higher level math, and but I was a good athlete. I, I was a good athlete, so I thought that's where I belonged. But I had a track coach that encouraged me that I could do more than that. I could do better, and uh, I was a quarter miler, uh, and I hated it. <laughs> Actually, I was a hurdler, and I was on my relay team, and I hated the mile relay team. Ah, oh, man, you know that's a rough race. I like the hurdles, I like the sprint. But there's something about the mile, the quarter mile, that called for <laughs> determination. Especially the last 100, 100 yards, they call it the 440, then they only did the 400 meters today. But I hated it. But you know, that's where the race is won or lost in that last, you know, 100, 100 meters. So I learned when things get tough, uh, you don't give up. And it was because of that spirit of determination uh, on, in the athletic field that you can either win or you lose. And when you lose, it doesn't mean that you are a loser. You get back into the game. And you need encouragement. That's why I think having a coach in your life, having a good friend in your life, the people you surround yourself with who are going to be encouraging to you, uh, it's really a key. And I remember going to college um, uh, and the first, it was hard. I went to a, a large school, predominantly <clears throat> white college, and I said, oh man, I, 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 this is going to be hard. 
And I remember I was in his math class, and I was failing. And I said, I'm not going to get help because I don't want anybody to know <clears throat> that I can't do this. And that's another problem. If you're struggling with something, don't be afraid to ask for help. But I wasn't going to ask <clears throat> my, uh, my teacher for help because it was a predominantly white uh, uh, class. It was a big lecture hall. And I figured, you know, I need to know this. But I was failing. Midway through the class, um, I was still getting poor grades. And finally, I had enough courage to go into the professor and to tell him that I don't know how to do this. So he looked at my background and he said, uh, Tom, you're in the wrong class. You, <laughs> this is a higher level math class. And you don't have the background to be here. Well, I didn't know that. Why didn't I know? Because I was afraid to ask for help. Afraid to go in and to tell somebody I don't know how to do this, can you help me? Well, many times when uh, we grow up, you meet people who don't know how to ask for help. It's not that they can't do it, but they don't ask. And if we're gonna make it and be successful in anything we do, we're gonna have to ask for help. And another, I think another key in being successful is a crisis. Many times <clears throat> you've got it easy and things aren't tough. Uh, that doesn't mean you're successful. In order to really make it, I think uh, you, you, you need a crisis in your life. And I remember 1968, I was in college. I was a sophomore. And that was the year that King was killed. I remember that, that evening when Dr. King was killed and uh, the black students got together and there was a moment in time where we could have all gotten into a lot of trouble. But because of my background, as I had stated earlier, you know, there's things that my parents had taught me. And uh, there were things I knew the difference between right and wrong. But there's also sometimes it's like you have to do something. You have to take a stand. And that, that night, <clears throat> we could have all got in trouble. And there was a position of leadership that was needed. And I knew the difference between right and wrong. And it was, a, it was a tough time, and we had to make some tough decisions. Bottom line, I think because of some things I had learned that, uh, in growing up, that we're going to have to do something, but it's not going to be what uh, could have gotten a lot of us in trouble in terms of violence. So we went in, long story short, and we went in the, the uh, cafeteria, and we just turned over some tables, knocked over some glasses, and we left. Everybody scattered. As we saw that incident, I think um, uh, I was kind of chosen as a leader, got involved with the school administration. And again, there was an affirmation because of the crisis that that can, that can become a leader. Uh, as a result of that, the incident, I got to know the president. I got to, um, again, when we look at what makes you successful, because of that crisis, it gave me an opportunity to see that I can speak before a large group. It gave me the confidence that I can speak to an issue. But it was because of the crisis in 68 um, that happened that caused me to get out of my insecurity, to take a stand and do something about it. Therein lies determination and the crisis. And then I went to graduate school um, and I learned that, hey, you know, this is going to take a little bit more to be what uh, maybe I can be. And, that led me to uh, get a master's degree and get a PhD and to become successful. So when I look back on what it takes, I, I think it takes a community. You cannot do it by yourself. I think it takes uh, determination. You're going to have to believe that you can achieve. I think along the way, it it's, there's going to be a crisis. The crisis is the test. And because you may fail, and you may fail a, a number of times, it does not mean you can't do it. It means you get back. It's like the, <laughs> it's like the quarter mile or the 440. It's the last 100 yards <laughs> uh, where you get back in the race. You're going to lose. You get back in the race. But you may lose again. But at some point in the race, 
uh, you're going to win. And you win because you're part of a team. And someone has encouraged you to be where you are. So you got that ter determination. I think that, that the community and uh, I think uh, because of, of the team that, that you can win. So my message, um, if you got life that's easy, <laughs> that doesn't mean you're going to win. You know, you need, you need a crisis that's going to help you. And it's got to be tough, but you can do it.